first of all, when uh, Cordula and Dirk asked me to uh, to participate today, I told him that since my presentation of last year, I think it was in February 2022, uh, not so many new elements came up. Basically, we we have this call it quick and dirty or cheap and dirty methodology to measure employment, and we still apply the same. But uh, we agreed it would be good to um, to be, to bring it back uh, to the table and to the webinar. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so um, I think the problem statement, it's it's well known. Uh, I will come to that in a minute. And then I will briefly outline what we are doing and also show, so show some results and some uh, takeaways, please. Uh, so the, um, the challenge is, uh, I mean, there's many people looking for a job. We are looking for jobs that we can count in our statistics. Uh, I think your executive director already pointed out here uh, the high political relevance or policy relevance of data on tourism employment. Um, when when we think about the economic importance of tourism, it's often uh, the share in GDP and the share it represents in the labor market that are mentioned as, uh, as hot topics. Uh, we know, and I think your executive director actually already gave away lots of the results I want to show, but it's good to see that our data is actually intensively used. Uh, it is um, a sector that has a, a job creation potential, um, as I wrote on the slide, in particular for uh, socioeconomic or social demographic groups that are not necessarily in the, uh, the best position in the labor market. So this may also link to the uh, the perceived quality of jobs. Uh, it's the, the jobs are often perceived as of lower quality. I think uh, striving for decent jobs is also one of the elements of the uh, sustainability uh, discussion. Uh, however, even if these jobs are sometimes categorized as lower compared to to white color jobs and other jobs, uh, it is there is for many people a, a need to have these find of have these kind of jobs and the tourism sector can actually offer uh, uh, chances to uh, to many of these uh, sometimes disadvantaged uh, people. Now, this being said, uh, it is quite hard to find official data or to produce official data on the uh, contribution of tourism to the labor market. Uh, the starting point is basically that uh, at international level, there is ISIC, the economic classification, which in Europe is called NAIS. Um, and this typically doesn't allow to uh, distinguish between tourism-oriented output and non-tourism-oriented output within each of these sectors. Uh, you probably know the story. I mean, if some, if uh, if we see how many passengers are in a train or what the turnover of a railway company is, we don't know what part is linked to the presence of tourists in that area, and what part is linked to. Um, commuters, for instance. It's the same in the restaurant. A restaurant might cater to tourists, but also to locals living in the same place, uh, going to a restaurant or to a bar. Um, so this is where TSA comes in. Uh, but even in TSA, the employment table is actually not using the, uh, the TSA methodology of applying ratios. And even then, uh, TSA table 7 unemployment is quite poorly implemented. So since it's not that easy to, uh, to produce data on, on tourism uh, employment using the, let's say, the standard tool of uh, business statistics and national accounts applying to different branches of the economy, uh, we try to find um, creative solutions. Um, and the uh, the aim is to, to use existing data, knowing that um, implementing new surveys, it's, it's quite complicated, costly, and not necessarily a success. Um, and in the solutions I will show in the next slides, it's actually we try to rely on, on statistics that most countries have available. I think in Europe, but probably also outside Europe. Uh, please. So the ingredients we use at the, uh, to, to make some kind of analysis from a distance on the labor market aspects is the labor force survey. Uh, what we call in your annual structural business statistics, but this comes down to two basic enterprise statistics that I think most statistical offices have across the world, because this is also an important input to national accounts. Uh, and to complement, uh, we also use data from earnings and labor cost surveys and um, job vacancy statistics, which is actually something that came up just last week when we were having a, a preparatory chat with uh, Dirk and Cordula to prepare this meeting. So the advantage, uh, at least on our side in the EU, is that uh, all of these statistics are harmonized within the European Union. So there is a certain comparability and, of course, also a certain uh, regular frequency that these data becomes available. So these are well-established uh, constant flows of data. 
also, I think across the world, most of these uh, basic statistics are available in, in most countries. So what I will be presenting might be replicable for many of you, probably not always at the desired um, regional granularity, because these uh, surveys are all, are, 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 I mean, these statistics are in general survey based. And as you know, the more you cut the sample into slices, the, the more there may be problems with rel reliability and um, confidentiality as well. Uh, next, please. So from the ingredients, we go to the recipe. Basically, there's two uh, two ways to look at the data. On the one hand, we want to look at absolute figures on employment in, in tourism industries. We use the uh, tourism industries as they find in the IRTS and the TSA recommended methodological framework, slightly adapted to EU uh, settings, but I will not go into details of that. So we use the... Uh, the general enterprise statistics, what we call structural business statistics or SBS for the identified tourism industries. Uh, this is what we use to make a, a quantitative assessment of the uh, employment. So basic to, uh, to make an estimate of the volume. Uh, I mentioned the, uh, the aspect of decent work. Um, I think uh, the executive director also mentioned it in the beginning. Uh, we also look into the characteristics of employment. Uh, for instance, breakdowns by gender and so on. This is what we typically don't have in enterprise statistics, um, but there we use the labor force survey, which is, as you probably know, um, the, in many countries, the biggest social survey or household survey, where of course we have all this uh, uh, demographic background variables available. Uh, however, the labor force survey has a quite um, a general um, breakdown by economic classification. So we basically limit us to those, uh, to that subset of the tourism industries that we can identify in the um, LFS. But I will come back to this in a, in a second. So this we use for the, uh, the qualitative assessment. So the qualitative assessment we get from the labor force survey, the quantitative assessment from SBS. Uh, in practice, we try not to cross the two because it's two different sources. So it's somehow different methodologies, business statistics, social statistics. So we, um, but of course you could always multiply the, uh, the shares of, of uh, by gender to the, uh, to the uh, quantitative data. Uh, next, please. Yeah, so on the left-hand side, you see the uh, the tourism industries as listed in the IRTS, or at least what uh, what we use. Uh, for instance, we, we don't include uh, real estate because in the European setting, the real estate sector, it's mainly for residential housing. The uh, Let's say the share of tourism is relatively low. Um, of course, there may be specific places if you go to... Um, to, to, the, to, for instance, the Costa del Sol, there might be a higher likelihood that real estate transactions are linked to second residences. But I think for the EU on average, it's safer to exclude this from this tourism industries instead of not to like over inflate the, uh, the data we get. So um, on the left hand, this is all the sectors we use for the uh, quantitative assessment. On the, on the right hand side for airline transport accommodation and tour operators travel agency activities, this is the, these are the ones that we can um, detect with a sufficient certainty in the labor force survey. So when we talk about the quantitative assessment, it's basically based only on this subset of three industries, which I think is also a, a good mix of higher profile jobs, uh, lower educated jobs, and a bit of a mix because tour operators, travel agencies, it's as well clerical jobs in offices, uh, sales, but also um, people in the field. Uh, next, please. Uh, some results and as said, um, uh, the executive director already gave away some of my conclusions in the beginning, but as I said, it's good to see that the data is used and picked up. Uh, when we look at the last, uh, let's say, pre-pandemic level, because I think this is still the, the best, I mean, the most representative benchmark rather than 20 or 21, um, these uh, tourism industries employed around 13 million people, again, without knowing exactly if the jobs are related to actually serving a tourists or not, but this is the abstraction we have to make or the... The, uh, the one of the limitations. Um, so that's what I wrote. The industries are not necessarily entirely relying on tourism for accommodation and airline transport. It's much more likely than, for instance, for uh, railway transport. On the other hand, there's also industries that are definitely linked to tourism that we don't exclude. For instance, uh, don't include. For instance, we don't include the retail sector. While in a in a tourism destinations, of course, uh, a big chunk of the retail might be linked to the uh, presence of tourists. Uh, the same for culture, museum will serve uh, to tourists as well as to to locals who want to visit the museum. Um, one 
thing that we we have been discussing was to maybe apply TSA based uh, tourism ratios because we we have the tourism industries we have the employment we could say we we apply the ratios that we have from TSA to each of these sectors uh, in practice when we talk to TSA experts they this advice us to do this uh, once because the the TSA ratios uh, that are produced for I mean to 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 contribute to tables five and six of TSA are uh, production oriented uh, demand side driven consumption oriented while the uh, the labor market structure might be completely different for instance I mean um, these sectors might be more labor intensive so it could be that we that we think we make a finer uh, estimate but actually we, we do something completely wrong so if we don't know where we are going we prefer to uh, to avoid the quicksand and stick to the the methodology i explained with uh, let's say a better known uh, view on the uh, shortcomings uh, just to give a few numbers uh, in more detail uh, when we look at the share of tourism industries in the services sector it's about 20 percent of the jobs uh, in greece this is more than half in cyprus it's also 42 percent um, we have an article uh, presenting a bit the, uh, the methodology and the, um, and the data. Uh, we updated, we updated this only every three years, and I think the next, next update will be in uh, 2024. But the, the methodology and the, the results somehow stand uh, as they are in the, uh, the linked article. I suppose the presentations will be shared with the participants afterwards, so you can find it there. Uh, next, please. Um, this is uh, a graph taken from the previous publication. Um, the uh, the top line, the first line, gives the share of uh, of each of these groups of people uh, in the employment in the tourism industries. Uh, at the bottom, you see the for comparison the share in the uh, in the total economy in all economic activities. So. Um, Again, not to repeat everything that the, uh, our colleague in the introduction said, uh, the sector seems to employ uh, relatively more females, relatively uh, more part-time workers, relatively more people with lower education, um, relatively more foreign citizens, uh, relatively more young people. Uh, we also see that the, uh, the average seniority uh, is, is lower in the tourism sector. There's many more people. I mean, there's significantly more people with a job seniority of less than two years compared to the overall economy. Uh, there's also me more people with temporary contracts. Uh, on the one hand, this is linked to, to the decency of the jobs. On the other hand, um, especially young people, they might also be happy with this kind of uh, flexibility. So it's, uh, again, I mean, there's uh, two stories or two sides to the medal. Uh, so, I mean, the... Um, in an, in an academic way, this might not look as the, the most decent or secure jobs, but this, I mean, the labor market also needs this kind of segmenting to, uh, to make it a dynamic labor market. Uh, next, please. Uh, yeah, as I said, besides this uh, quantitative and qualitative assessments, we also try to look in uh, labor cost and earnings. This is uh, data we take from other uh, uh, statistical surveys in the EU. Um, the um, the blue uh, bar gives the hourly labor costs, and the uh, the orange bar gives the uh, the gross hourly earnings. So let's have a look at the gross hourly earnings uh, when we compare the total economy. This is relatively old data, and I didn't have the time to update the slide. There is more recent data available, but I think the structure hasn't changed uh, that much. Uh, if in the total economy, it's uh, and in the services sector, it's about sixteen euro in the. Uh, tourism industries that we talk about, it, it drops a bit to about 13 euro. Uh, of course, uh, it is linked to the, uh, the on average uh, lower seniority, which is one of the explicatory factors, of course. Um, this, the, the last three bars show that there's a, a bit of a heterogeneity within the three industries we can look at. Uh, for air, for end to air transport, this is relatively high. Uh, because it's also more high, highly technical skilled people often. Uh, for accommodation, it's relatively low. For travel agency, as I said, it's, it's a bit of a mix of all kinds of profiles. It's a bit in between. So this data, which is also readily available uh, to exploit, helps to also get a, an idea of the, um, let's say, the, uh, the, the earnings in the sector. Uh, next, please. This is, uh, this is something new compared to the presentation of last year. As I said, the presentation is largely based on the one I made last year in the same webinar uh, a year and a half ago. Um, it's just because, uh, I don't know if it was Dirk or, or uh, Cordula who mentioned um, if we have data on the, uh, the staff shortages that were perceived in the tourism sector. 
Uh, unfortunately, I looked at the data. We have data, but it's not at a very detailed level of NACE or ISEC. Uh, the only sector we can identify with relevance for tourism, uh, I think it's the hospitality sector, accommodation and food service activities. Uh, the graph shows the uh, the job vacancy rates in the, in that sector. It's the blue line. Uh, the dotted line gives the trend, but if you look at the blue line, um, you can see that uh, the last uh, years it was it was a bit high. There's this flat orange line, which is somehow making distinction of the levels that we saw before the pandemic, and then what what happened in the last five six years. Uh, um, um, now, so we can see that. The, the, the trend seems to be that the jobs shortages have uh, have increased recently. Uh, I also looked uh, in comparison with the total services sector, and actually, um, since I mean the, the, this graph starts in uh, Q4 2010, the uh, the job vacancy rates in the accommodation and food sector tend to be higher than the uh, uh, overall figure for the entire services sector. Uh, only at the beginning of the uh, pandemic there was a, a bit of a an inverse side, of course, because the uh, the accommodation and food sector is largely closed across, across Europe. So this data also helps to give some uh, additional insights. I think there's one more slide on this, which compares. Uh, can you go to the next one, please? Yeah, this compares the, the job vacancy rate for the most recent available quarter, the second quarter of 2023. Uh, where we see that actually accommodation and food services has one of the highest uh, job vacancy rates if you cut the economy in these, uh, I don't know, 10, 12, uh, 15 uh, sectors. I think this was this for the data. I think there's one last slide. Yep, just some, uh, just to wrap up. Um, I think the, I mean, the very positive thing of what I was presenting is that this is data that I think most statistical offices have available. So there's no extra collection cost or respondent burden. Uh, we rely on existing sources. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this should be replicable. Uh, we also can build on the harmonization efforts that have been made over the decades for people working on these surveys. So we use, I mean, the, pro, the, 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 the ingredients have their shortcomings, but at least we know that the uh, ingredients are uh, robust, solid uh, products uh, because they have been there for uh, for quite some time. Uh, with this methodology, we can get some, I call it insights because it's, I mean, maybe that's a more fair word in the volume and in the quality of the jobs. Uh, the limitations, uh, the timeliness might be an issue because uh, enterprise statistics take a while to be ready. LFS is usually available with quarterly levels. Uh, I mentioned the uh, under coverage and over coverage because of taking all employment in a given sector and also because of excluding some of the sectors that still have some tourism relevance. Um, however, in the countries, I mean, the more you can go to the deeper levels of uh, of NACE, the more fine you can make the uh, the methodology. And often within the NSIs, there might be more detail available than what we receive at Eurostat as the, uh, the tip of the iceberg. Um, I think uh, because I haven't mentioned the the granularity, um, what we publish it's actually at national level. For us, it's difficult to go at the uh, subnational level, but again, in national statistical offices. And I would invite the uh, the observatories to talk to the national statistical office to see what they can do um, at um, at uh, lower uh, granular level. And lastly, as I said, we can also look into other labor market statistics to mention uh, earnings and labor cost, and also to look at the uh, job vacancy rates in, in, I mean, one particular tourism sector, but I think accommodation and food, it is one of the uh, important ones compared to the rest of the economy. I think this was it. I just have a closing slide giving the link to our website. Uh, the website mainly deals with traditional tourism statistics, uh, you know, accommodation statistics, tourism demand surveys, uh, if you need more data on, on the employment or on the methodology I presented, uh, feel free to contact me.